Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our talk. Uh, we're going to talk about the playable section, so let's get started. First of all, we're going to create an empty game object and we're going to call it Director. And then we're going to go to the playables section and we're going to hit Playable Director. Now, Playable Director, let me first talk about these real quick. It has this asset that we're going to create right now. And I'll show you how to create it, but pretty much you create it with the timeline. And then there's this update uh, method, update method. There's a DSP clock, game time, unscaled game time, and manual. DSD clock is, it's selected for sample accurate audio scheduling. So when you select it, the timeline instance, it, it will use the same clock source that processes audio. So like anything that processes the audio source, uh, this, will, this playable director will also process that as well. Now game time will use, instead of using the, the clock source for audio, it will use the clock source for, for the game, the game clock. So uh, time scaling, so like time dot delta time. And then um, there's also unscaled game time. So this will be the clock source that's used for the, the game clock uh, that, that is not really affected by time scaling. And then there's also manual. So manual, uh, if you want to set it up through script, you could do that as well. Just play on the wake. So if you want to play right away, or if you want it to actually have an initial time, uh, there's a wrap mode. So you could hold it. So hold it at the end, the last frame, hold it there. You can make it loop. So make it play over and over and over. And then there's none. Now there's also this uh, initial time, like I was saying. So if you have this off, you could actually set when you want it to start playing. If you want it to start playing during the first five seconds or anything like that. But for now, we're just going to click uh, play on the wake. Now there's bindings. Bindings will automatically be added and I'll show you right now. So w as I said, we needed our timeline. So we'll go to window. If you don't have it already set up, go to window, uh, sequencing, timeline, and this will pop up. Uh, for now, I'll just leave it here just so you guys could kind of get a good view of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a timeline. Now, I'm going to put it in my animations folder, but you guys could put it anywhere you you know, you know guys want. And I already made one, so I'm just going to save it as that one. I'm going to overwrite it. And as you can see, this is what we get. Now, we could add stuff right here, or we could right-click in this box and add that stuff. Now, this is just like the animation. Uh, tab if you've seen it it has this little timeline and uh, there's also if you wanted a ripple mode uh, if you wanted to replace or if you want to show and hide the time markers so and this is um it says toggle play range markers and i'll show you what that is right now so first of all we're gonna start creating something we're gonna we're gonna first start creating an activation track now an activation track is uh, just a way of setting a game object to be active or unactive so you will be able to see it or not so what i'm first going to do is i'm going to bring in my slime and i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to put in my turtle if this happens you just have to go to wherever you put the component your playable director component and i put it here so then i'm going to drag this turtle one in and now i'm going to kind of split this off so we could kind of see what's going on so now we've got this slime and this turtle now if we hit play, it, it will play. And as soon as the five seconds are up, now just go back. So let's say in the beginning of this, I do not want them to see my slime. What I would have to do is just grab one of these and drag it over. So I don't want the first five seconds for you to see it, either the slime or the turtle. So as you can see, you can't see it and then you'll be able to see it. Uh, we could even uh, do it like now, if you need like more preci precision, uh, you could zoom in and zoom out. So just hover over this, and with your, you know, your scroll, your mouse scroll wheel, just scroll up or down. So now we're gonna have it where the slime appears, then the turtle, and then we're just leave it like that. Now we'll right click, and there's track group. Now track group is just a way of you organizing uh, your 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 tracks I guess you could say your groups or your little events that are gonna happen so I'm just gonna name this activation group and then I'm just gonna drag both of these in and then as you can see it has 
uh, post playback uh, state if you want to activate it if you want to inactivate it if you want to revert so if we hit play it's just a way of activating the whole group if you want to you know leave as is if you want to have it inactive active then what we're going to do is we're going to start adding our animation track so when we click animation track we could actually bring in uh, one of our characters so i'm going to bring in the slime character now there's a couple ways we could do it we could if you see right here we have this record button we could actually record something so i could actually hit record grab my slime I'll move them up a little bit and then after like 20 seconds make them come over here kind of hit this guy and then after 40 seconds we'll move them back and then we can you know hit that record button make sure you hit that record button because it will record most of the things that you do so now when we hit play as you can see he actually hits them now that's one way of doing it another way of doing it is you could right click on this animation track and add from animation clip so i could actually add from animation clip i could add let's say idle battle and then as you can see he's just kind of hovering now i could add this for let's say the duration of this battle so And then I could add multiple ones with the the same, let's say, uh, the same person. So we have a Mytholin. And then let's say at 30 seconds, we'll have him. Well, actually, let's bring this back. So at 30 seconds, we'll add another clip. It's going to be a uh, battle. Right. We'll have it idling. And right here, we'll have it attack. Okay, so then let's say right here, we're going to record it and we're going to add the slime. He's going to be over here and then when he attacks, he's going to be over here. So now if I hit play and then once it's over, we'll record it and he'll be back. Actually, not right away. I'll be right here. He'll be back. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't want to drag this video too long, but you guys kind of get the picture. You know, Smack him real quick, he goes back, and um, then I could add, you know, another one, the turtle real quick, add from animation clip, and this one, so when, so when I hit him right there, boom, move it over, he gets hit, so, now if we see it all, all over again, he goes over, boom, hits him, he goes over, and yeah, now with this activation group, I could actually select this, and I think I'm going to make them way shorter so 53 seconds now these all these little sections or components or tracks whatever you want to call them these are the bindings that we see here so we could actually select one and remove them here from here and then i'm going to add another group and then name this animation group and i'll just drag all these in real quick and keep showing you the rest so there's audio for audio you would have to have an audio source so i have an audio source oh, right here so you would have to have an audio source and then you could actually add an audio clip so i don't know what sound it is i honestly don't even know if i have my settings right for you to be able to hear the sound so we'll see i don't even know what sound it is okay so i couldn't really hear the sound so uh, what I'm gonna do is just in case there is a sound I'm gonna lower this a little bit hopefully it won't catch you guys off guard but you could also make a loop and then uh, if I hit play hopefully you guys can hear it I wasn't able to and then after that uh, I'm just gonna remove this just in case you can hear it you don't have to hear it all the time every time I play this audio I mean this timeline clip um, there's also control track now control track I was not able to figure what this out or what this was I do know that if you go to some of the animations so like I found in this animations like these animation models if I drag one in I get this control track but I'm not sure if see it don't seem like it animates yeah it's not not animating I don't see it animate uh, it does say parent game object so let me try pairing this one now it's parented let me see if that works 
actually bring it over here. Um, let me actually let me turn this off the slime. So you could actually turn it off. You could lock it, or you could pin it. Or it says expand track markers. Oops. So now let me see. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you guys know what the control track is, let us know in the comments below. It will be really helpful. Help us all. Also, the playable track, because all this is is a script, and they don't show anything over here, and yeah, there's no real information about it. I know that you could also create playable assets or behaviors. Uh, if you, let's say you click playable behavior, and we actually click on this right well we don't click on it but we could check right here what this script is doing so if I expand this we could see right here that there's a on graph start so I'm guessing that as soon as you know this graph starts there's a stop when it plays when it pauses and uh, when it's preparing the, film, uh, the frame it says called each frame while the state is set to play so this is like an update called when the state of the playable is set to pause so if it gets paused uh, when it gets played so like a start um, this, is, this is when the owning graph stops playing so when it's stopped and then uh, when it starts playing the graph and not the state of the playable but the graph so and then um, after that there's also there's also um, this asset now this asset it says right here it is a uh, it is a method that generates a playable based on this asset so you could actually have a, a create a playable so you just have to pass a, a, a playable graph and a game object uh, so if you guys know what these are let us know in the comments below It'll help us a lot help anybody watching these videos and that are wondering what these are and um, let's keep going now these signals right here you could create so there's a signal track right here and it's going to be asking for a signal now a signal uh, you can't just you know drag and drop one of these in and to create one of these you would go to create and then there's signal right here by timeline but you wouldn't be able just to you know drag and drop one of those so what you would have to do is you would actually have to add uh, a, a game object that you want to actually have a signal receiver so what a signal receiver is is a pretty much a component if we add a component and we go to single uh, signal receiver it's right there and then we can add reactions so um, these are the signals that I created right here so let me rename these to uh, signal made and then I'm gonna rename this one single uh, signal made now so signal made and signal made now and then we could see right here there's two signal made and signal made now so these are it now if we click on them there's really nothing we could do so what we're going to do is we're going to drag this director in here since we already have a signal component and then what we could do is now with this with this um track we could actually add a signal emitter or a signal emitter would pretty much be one of these or we could just drag this in so there's uh what did it get dragged into Okay, there's one. I don't know where the other one got dragged into, but so there's two now. And these, what these pretty much are, they're just events. So you can make this event once, so have a single event. And then there's retroactive. It says this signal, even if playback starts afterwards, it will uh, it will emit it. So uh, so it to emit the signal, even if playback starts afterwards. So you could do that. We can have that checked. And then uh, each one is different, as you can see. So after that we could add reactions so we're going to add a reaction for single main now and we're going to add another one for uh single main and um I think there's another one somewhere but i don't see it so now after that we could uh add an event just like a button so let's say my game view yeah let's say my water i'm just gonna set it to be disabled so you can't see it and then somewhere around here i'm gonna set my water to be enabled so now this should work. Now you can't see it in the timeline. You would actually have to play it. So let me hit play. Actually, let me move this over and hit play. So yes, yeah, you can see it deactivates it. And you can see they just, yeah. 
as you can see. Now the reason that they started playing different animations is because if we look at the their little animations, I don't know if I talked about it, but they're the RPG Monster Duo PBR uh, Poly Art by Dungeon Ma uh, Mason. The supported unit version is 5.6 and higher. It's only 6.4 megabytes. I'll leave it in the links below. It's just these two, um, just these two uh, models. And, and so these two, what's it called? Um, these two models, uh, let me just explain it. These two models, they have uh, on their animations where they play different random animations. So that's why we kept seeing different animations. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the director and I'm gonna go to um, wrap mode and I'm gonna put loop so we could see this a little better. So now we can see it disappears, it activates, disappears, it activates, disappears as intended. So if we go to our timeline, split it up, split this up, make it as big as possible. As you can see right here, it activates, and it deactivates, activates, deactivates. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the playable director. As I said, you could add like five seconds and then uncheck this. And then after five seconds, it should start playing instead of right away. So just give it five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, and it should start playing. There you go, start hitting each other. Or maybe not, I mean, maybe I gotta play on awake. that's where anyways if you see it says the time at which the playable will be playing um, but yeah that's pretty much it for this uh, video if you guys liked it if you guys learned something if you guys just enjoyed the video hit that like button if you guys want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button the next video we will be talking about the, the rendering section so we're gonna talk about the camera canvas render flare layer and I'm not sure if I talked about the canvas renderer and the camera, but if I didn't, that will be covered in the next video. So once again, thank you.